hi and welcome to my channel or if you're a returning subscriber hi again it's so nice to see you back here for another video my name is Tess Lark and this is an art and beauty channel so if those are videos you're interested in make sure you're subscribed because I'm here for you every single week and this week I'm gonna show you how you can make these really cute lotus candle holders using epoxy resin alcohol ink some mica powder and glitter <laughs> been a while since I've made these and I always love how they turn out. I really love having an array of these in different colors just around my house or on my Etsy store. This technique is pretty straightforward and it's great for beginners or anyone just getting started with resin art and this is a step-by-step -step beginning to end process video so I will include the steps to mixing resin as well. If you do like this video don't forget to give it a like. It not only helps out my channel a whole lot but it also lets me know that I'm making content that you want to see for me. And and if you're interested in more step-by-step -step resin techniques, I do have an entire resin art playlist on this channel, so make sure to check that out after you're done with this video. As always, I will have all of the materials that I use for this project linked in the description below, so if anybody is interested in trying this project for themselves, all of that information will be down there for you. And I will try my best not to chat your ears off, so let's just hop right into today's project. Each one of these lotus molds holds exactly 100 milliliters of resin, so I'm gonna go ahead and mix up 200 milliliters total of resin. So that's 100 milliliters of resin and 100 milliliters of hardener. But I will say, because of the exact measurement of this, I did end up needing a little bit of extra resin at the end of this project, so I would recommend mixing up about 250 milliliters to start. And when you're measuring your resin, you wanna make sure that you're pouring slowly because the resin is quite viscous, so it takes a moment to level out. And when you're mixing your resin, you want to make sure you're thoroughly mixing it, scraping the sides and the bottom of your container. And once the resin appears pretty clear, we'll set it off to the side and get our mold set up. And I like to keep my molds in their bags between uses just to try to keep some dust or pet hair out of them. And again, I'm using a piece of duct tape here just to clean out those molds and make sure there's no dust or pigment remaining. You can even, with these molds, turn them inside out and really get in there just to make sure you've got a clean start. And once my molds are clean, I will move on to the resin, which as you can see here, it's had some time for some bubbles to raise to the surface. So I'm just gonna go ahead and use my heat gun and pop those bubbles before moving on to our next step. So I've got two cups here. I'm gonna be mixing up glitter first. For each of these projects, I'm gonna be using glitter and then a different color. Both of them will have clear and white and they'll both have a different color of glitter. So I'm mixing up my blue glitter here, just adding a little bit of glitter and a little bit of the resin, about 20 milliliters or so of resin to this glitter. And then in the second cup, I'm going to add my gold glitter, which will be going into the red lotus. So adding a little bit of resin to that as well and giving that a good mix. Next, I'm going to pour a small portion of resin in two additional small cups, and I'll be using these to add my alcohol inks to. So in one of these cups, I'll be using a red alcohol ink, and in the other one, I'll be using blue, and I'm using pinata colors. And once again, I will have all of the materials that I use for this project linked down in the description below. The general rule of thumb when mixing pigments with resin is you want to keep it 90% resin to 10% pigment. So that does give you a pretty good amount of playroom. So I'm just squirting some of my colors in here and mixing those up. As always, scraping both the sides and the bottom of my containers. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and pour a pretty good portion of resin, almost 100 milliliters, just reserving another 20 milliliters of so. And I'm pouring so much because I'm going to be using my white for both of my lotuses. So I want to have a really good amount of that white resin. And once again, mixing that in, scraping the sides and the bottom of the container and making sure that that pigment is really well incorporated. 
I'm also adding a little bit of Arteza's Mica Powder in their Periwinkle Glow to the white just because it gives it a really pretty translucent purple sheen to the finished product. And I find when working with mica powder, it's especially important to make sure it's really thoroughly mixed so you don't get any clumps of pigment. Now that I've got all of my colors ready, I'll go ahead and hit them with my heat gun before moving on to the next step. And again, especially with the glitters, you do get a lot of little air bubbles, so it's good to use heat to pop those bubbles. So starting out with my blue lotus, I'm going to go ahead and start by pouring in my blue resin and I'm pouring really slowly. This mold does have a pretty small opening so you don't want it to overflow. Next I'm adding a little bit of that clear resin that I reserved and this just allows you to be able to see some of the patterns when you start pouring in your white. So next up is white, again pouring slowly from a small stream at a high angle. This helps pop some air bubbles and allows the resin to level out so I don't overfill my mold. And I'm stopping when I can see the white on the bottom side and then I'm going to go ahead and add my glitter. And I ended up needing a little bit more to fill this mold, so I added a little bit more clear resin and a bit more of that glitter to pour some into there. And then I also went ahead and used the remaining of my blue resin and added some glitter to that as well. And then once this mold is completely full, it's time to go ahead and hit it with the heat gun. And then we'll carefully move it to the side and move on to the Red Lotus. So again, starting with my color, in this case red, and I'm pouring that in slowly to make sure that I'm not going to overfill my mold. Pouring too fast could lead to it kind of getting over the sides and making a big mess. And then moving right along and adding some of my clear resin. I'm very sorry about this angle. Sometimes when I'm crafting and filming, I'm just into the moment and not paying attention to what's on the screen. But following that clear resin up with my white, and I'm going to be using the rest of the white here. And stopping when I can see that those nice lower petals are really full. And then I'm adding my gold glitter last. And once again, I ran out of glitter here, so I mixed up just another ounce of glitter, and I'm just going to go ahead and pour that in until that mold is nice and full. And then after this mold is completely full, I'll go ahead and hit both of these pieces one more time with my heat gun before covering them up for the night and letting them cure completely. And I do like to cover my pieces while they're curing just to keep any dust and pet hair out of them, but it is completely optional. All right, so I went ahead and I let our lotuses set up overnight. They're totally cured, nice and hard. So let's just pull them out of their mold and see how they turned out. So here's our blue lotus and it does seem like the glitter kind of took over a little bit but honestly I kind of love it. So we've got these like white larger petals and this really glittery center and bottom. Overall I think this turned out super cute. So let's pull out the red one and see how that one turned out. And these molds are kind of tricky to get out of there just because it's it gets to be really tight. So just do your best, manhandle it a little bit. And here is our red lotus. Ooh, and this one turned out so pretty. Love all the patterns with the red and white in here. And again, the glitter really did kind of take over, but it gives this really cool sparkly effect to the overall piece. I really like this one. And I'll definitely make sure to take a couple shots and some natural light just so you can see them a little bit better. But these are really cool. And there's not too much of a lip on these guys, so I'm just gonna go ahead and put some rubber bumpers on the bottom of them and then these will be ready. So I just have these little rubber bumpers here. 
So I'm just gonna put them on the bottom of my piece, just like that. There we go. And now these little guys are ready to be photographed and listed on Etsy. Which, by the way, shameless plug, I'm gonna go ahead and link my Etsy down below if you wanna check it out. It's a great way that you can help support me, my art, and this channel. Overall, I'm super happy with these, especially because I haven't made them in a while. I definitely find that when I'm making the same project over and over, it becomes a little bit more intuitive and I have a little bit more control over the results, which actually is one of the reasons why I started this YouTube channel to begin with. I wanted to be able to look back at some projects and figure out exactly how I did them so I could replicate them. But with analog art, sometimes things just surprise you and don't turn out exactly the way that you intended, but you can still get really awesome results. So that is it for me this week, you guys. I hope that you enjoyed this video, and I hope that it inspires you to make something of your own today. Thank you so much for being here and tuning in. Thank you for spending a part of your day with me, especially if you made it all the way to the end. And if you did make it all the way to the end, leave me some sort of flower emoji, flower or plant emoji, just so that I know that it's real. As always, I I would love to hear your thoughts in the comment section below. I really love that we're building a little community here of crafters and creators and people that are just curious. So yeah, let me know how you're doing. Let me know how your day is going and I will see you in the next one. Bye.